Hello everyone, today I'll be reviewing Zulu. So Zulu came out in 1964 and was directed by Cy Enfield and is a British war film. So this film focuses on the Battle of Rourke's Drift, which was between the British Army and the Zulu Warriors in 1879. The plot of this film really focuses on 150 British Army officers trying to hold off a force of 4,000 Zulu Warriors. And actually right at the start of this film, we're introduced to the Zulu Warriors, and we can see that they have their own tribe and they have their own culture. And right at the start, or just before the film takes place, these Zulu Warriors have massacred some other British army forces and now they are going towards this British base where it looks as though the British army will be severely outnumbered as they only have 150 officers and 30 of them are actually sick or wounded and so are lying in the hospital wing at the moment. So during the first half of this film we really get to know the characters and there is quite a lot of build up before any of the action happens but I quite like the fact that in the first half of this film we were introduced to these different characters and we sort of get to know more about them so stanley baker he plays lieutenant chard who is really the sort of main character in this film um, and then we also have michael kane as lieutenant bromhead now interestingly enough in the opening credits of this film it actually said introducing michael kane now this wasn't actually michael kane's first film but it was his first big major film and made him become a big star afterwards given this was the first time that i'd seen this film i was quite surprised that michael kane is speaking in a posh upper class english accent instead of his usual cockney accent that we hear um, in lots of his other films however i think it works really well and he did an excellent job one of the more interesting characters is actually um, played by james booth and he plays private henry hook and well he's a soldier but he spends a lot of time in the hospital wing because he's injured but he seems quite cowardly and he doesn't want to fight. But later on, we do see him redeem himself quite a bit as he does some heroic acts later on. Some of the other actors we get in this film are Nigel Green, um, Jack Hawkins and Patrick McGee. Now, Nigel Green, he's, he's a very authoritative character um, in this film. He plays Colour Sergeant um, Frank Bourne. And he's definitely one of the standout characters and gives one of the standout performances. In every scene he's in, he pretty much seems to steal. Patrick McGee is also excellent. He plays the doctor or the surgeon and he's healing all the wounded patients. And Jack Hawkins, he plays a reverend um, and a missionary. That's a bit of a different role than I've seen him in other films like Ben-Hur and Bridge and River Kwai as he is essentially trying to bring peace and he wants the British forces to evacuate from the area because he doesn't think that they're going to be able to hold off the Zulu warriors. But at the same time, he's a bit of an alcoholic and comes across as quite clumsy. And yeah, he isn't particularly helpful um, in this situation. So when we move into the second half of the film, this is where the action takes place. The battle, it does go on for a long time. It really takes up really the whole second hour of this film is this epic and grand and intense battle between the British army and the Zulu warriors and the way that the Zulus surround the British army is really impressive they have this tactic where they go around on both sides and they surround them and then move in together so it's really interesting and just really fascinating seeing the tactics of the Zulu warriors in terms of how this film looks I think it looks great it's a very colorful film and yeah the cinematography is very impressive I have to admit though that during the fight scenes although the fight scenes they really look excellent um, quite a lot of the time they do look slightly staged because sometimes when the Zulu warriors they might stab some of the british army officers they might just seem to touch them lightly with the spears and then the british army officers just suddenly fall to the ground so it all sometimes looks a bit silly but you know then again you sort of have to forgive it for that because overall it's a very good film and yes the battle scenes all together are actually very impressive what i really like about this film is that it sort of um leaves it up to us as the audience to decide who to root for because we're actually introduced to the Zulus at the start of the film but obviously throughout a lot of the film we see the British army officers and their tactics wanting to um, defend this area. We want the British army to be able to defend themselves and want them to be able to ward off 
all these Zulu warriors, especially because the British army are really the underdogs in this situation, is that they have far less manpower and far less people um, in order to defend this area. But at the same time, the Zulu tactics are very impressive, and I can respect that as well. Now, in terms of historical accuracy, obviously, given that, that this is a film, it obviously isn't 100% historically accurate. But, you know, this is a movie. I see it as an adventure film, a piece of entertainment, and that it does very well. I was looking at some other reviews of this film, interestingly, and um, one of the funny things that was quite mentioned is that um, in the real battle... Um, that took place historically most of the British officers had moustaches now in this film there's actually not many British officers that have moustaches except for Nigel Green's character um, colour sergeant Frank Bourne but that's a really minor difference and really sort of not that important so it seems a bit strange to pick up on something like that but as a war film it's excellent and I particularly like the way that it has the set up and the build up and then the battle at the end although I do admit the setup perhaps is a little bit slow particularly by today's standards if you're used to watching modern films you might think that this film takes quite a while before we actually get to the battle scene but once we get to that battle scene once the zulus arrives and they surround the british officers it gets really interesting and it's very much worth the wait so interestingly i actually watched an interview with uh, michael kane on the dick cabot show from 1972 and michael kane was actually talking about the film zulu and he was saying how the film wasn't very popular in America at the time. And he thinks the reason that it was very popular is because um, Americans saw this as a film about white people and black people killing each other. Which obviously, you know, given that it came out in the 60s, perhaps wasn't a particular popular idea. But then Dick Cavett actually says that he really likes the film. He saw it as more of an adventure film instead of just white people and black people killing each other. So it's just really interesting seeing different points of view there. I have to say, overall, I think it's a fantastic film. It's a really good uh, war film. The setup is excellent. It's an excellent looking film. It does come across as very realistic, even if it is slightly flawed in places and perhaps a bit stagey with the fight scenes. I can't fault the performances at all. Michael Caine is excellent. Stanley Baker, terrific cast. Altogether, a very well-made film. If you haven't seen this film, you should definitely go and see it. So I'm going to give Zulu a rating of 9 out of 10. Um, if you like war films, then you'll definitely like this, uh, particularly if you like um, these these epic films which are from this sort of era. It does a very good job of coming across as one of these classic war films. And yes, it's an excellent watch altogether. So there we go. So that is my review of Zulu. So what do you guys think? Have you seen Zulu? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Please let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.